Hey guys, I'm Paul and you're watching Circular Motion. <laughs> Friends, welcome back and thanks for joining me again to talk about some records. But uh, before I do, uh, thanks for coming back if you've, uh, if you've come back for more. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you're brand new, please hit subscribe. And if either way, whether you're new or you're old, if you like what you see, please hit uh, the like button and hit me up in the comments i've had some nice conversations uh just recently and uh, so it's, it's nice to connect with people that have the same interests same passions so uh keep those comments coming uh, again if you've got any suggestions for records that you think i might like again hit me up in the comments and let's crack on but before i do i think uh, when would it have been a little while ago, I was talking about um, eBay purchases and how I got the Shia Heart Attack. And I bought it off, off eBay and it was in immaculate condition and how I was waiting for another record. And I broke my cardinal rule. I did not ask the seller to confirm that the record was in perfect condition. This was Queen Live Killers. Uh, an album that I do have, but it's from the... Queen Complete Works box set and it's not the best present in the world and it's paper thin. But uh, so I thought, well, you know, it's there, it was 10 quid and he said, oh yeah, there's a few marks, but it plays well now. I bought a Coliseum album that had a few marks on it and it looked like shit when I got it, but when I played it, it played perfectly. So I thought, well, I'll just, you know, I'd gone on and just hit ending soonest and that popped up. So I thought, well, three minutes to go, put a bit on, got it, bang. And then it arrived. First of all, big red flag, it literally arrived in a bin bag, which was quite a little bit of, I think in uh, films and TV, they call it foreshadowing, because uh, it was trash. And I'll show you just how bad it was. So bear in mind, the guy said in his listing, he said that this, uh, this record does have a lot of marks, but it doesn't affect the sound in any way. Listen to this. Uh, having heard that, that was uh, I think side one or side two of the first disc, I can't really remember now, uh, but I put it on because I was quite concerned that the side of this scratch that I could see, and yeah that was brutal, uh, so I challenged him politely and he said well it played fine on my system, so I asked him if when he played it he'd used a potter's wheel and some kind of screw because there was no way on earth that ever sounded anything but the way you heard it on anyone's system you know it's not a question of well you know this cartridge didn't pick that up or, or whatever it was just you heard it anyway long story short i got the money back uh, but yeah there's a there's a lesson kids don't uh if you're gonna buy off ebay always always inbox the seller and say look you could have a great description, but can you just confirm you've play tested it and it plays fine? Just to save any hassle further down the road. Be up front with them and hopefully they'll be up front with you. But anyway, without any further ado, uh, so <coughs> I changed the format slightly because uh, I was thinking that, you know, 30 minute videos weren't really getting any kind of traction and I sometimes look at the length of a video with them when I go on YouTube. And I think, oh, no, I can't be bothered. Uh, so like 15 minutes, 20 minutes max, maybe is, is, is a good size. And so I thought I'd just, for now, go through some of the records that I haven't shared with you that I got before my favorite shop in town closed and a couple of sort of new purchases that I've bought um, as opposed to secondhand purchases. So uh, yeah, I'll just jump straight in. Uh, I've got some, you know, some gems. Uh, well, depending on your point of view. I'm going to start with this. So this is Tusk by Fleetwood Mac, as I'm sure most of you will know. This is actual, um, an original pressing, uh, is it 1979, I think? But this is a South African called a disc box. I've sort of gone through it twice. Um, so yeah, this is a South African version. Everything's sort of in there. Uh, 
it's got like two cool inner sleeves that also have inner sleeves within the inner sleeves, which I think is quite a, you know, it's a nice presentation. Uh, in terms of quality, I mean, I paid 14 quid for this from my now favorite, now defunct record shop, the record cut in town. Um, it's got a nice sort of embossed cover there and everything. Uh, you know, it is it is nice for 15 quid. It's in great condition. A little bit of surface noise here and there, but nothing nothing exceptional. Nothing that will make you think, "Well, I've wasted my money." My only problem is, and I feel that I should like them, but my only problem is I just don't. I can't get away with Fleetwood Mac. I like the chain. Who doesn't? But there's nothing on here that really jumps out and makes me go, "Wow, yeah." I know there are no 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 light bulb moments so yeah anyway i got it it's there next up i've got donny hathaway extensions of a man which is a reissue uh, from 2014 i believe and it's 180 gram vinyl it's on the atco label and it's it's nice it's a really nice album and I think, I can't remember where I saw this, I think it was on a, one of uh, Dylan at Noble Records, I think it was him, um, he'd shared it, and so I thought, oh yeah, I'll give that a go, because, you know, he, he always uh, seems to pull things out of thin air that, that I end up really liking, and yeah, it's nice, it's a nice, sort of, nice, soulful album, uh, it's not my favourite album, but it sounds really nice. It does sound really nice. It's a really nice pressing. Um, and I got this cheapest chips off Amazon for, I think I paid 20 quid for it. So, and that was with, I got Prime, so I got free postage. So yeah, decent, very decent. <laughs> no judgment, Jackson's, Jackson 5 even. Uh, greatest hits. I only bought it because I had one track on the whole, well, two actually uh, before i started filming i listened to the last track on the second side rockin robin but i only bought it for abc which i think is an absolutely killer track um paid five quid for this and you know it's on the time it's an original pressing from what i can gather for the greatest hits and it's yeah it's it's decent 1973 i think it was released i did write it down yeah oh 1972 even so this is like you know it's an original copy that Sleeve uh, needs a bit of attention because the glues come apart on the top there, but otherwise it's a nice clean copy. It's, you know, there are no no scratches. There's hardly any surface noise on it. So for a fiver, you can't really go wrong. And like I say, ABC is an absolutely killer track. And whenever I listen to it, I can't help but think of the, the dance uh, sequence from Clerks 2. So yeah. Then another beauty. Um, Blue Icicle. Fun fact, uh, the first the first band that I had a proper band, proper job with, uh, short lived, but uh, we played Don't Fear the Reaper. So that was one of the first sort of Blue Oyster songs that I learned as a drummer many, many, many years ago. Uh, but this is a, it's a great album. It's, it's, it's an original press in 1977 and I got it mainly because it's got Godzilla on it and mainly because it was 4 dollars uh, But yeah, Godzilla is one of my favourite BOC tracks. It is just cracking and it sounds... This this has got one of those classic 70s album sounds. It's it's really got some really nice dirty sounding guitar, but the vocals just sound like they've, uh, they're a bit muddy, a bit muddy. But drums, bass, guitar, all sound absolutely cock on. So if you get a chance, to, to catch up with this album, it's, it's a really good album. Golden Age of Leather is another great track and Searching for Celine, uh, brilliant. So yeah, again, another you know, five quid, five quid, and then you go to some record shops and they'll charge you like stupid, stupid prices. One thing I've noticed is that even on eBay now, people are tending to kind of push the prices up um, and when they're going like ridiculous, um, you know, they're just putting stuff on, and, and I, I'm on a couple of buy and sell groups on Facebook, and they just people are putting albums on for like stupid, like three figure amounts for something that's Discogs lists for not even 15 quid. It's like, have a word with yourself, mate. Uh, when I used to go to a record, I used to like to make random 
wildcard purchases. Usually, I'd find a five pound album that somebody I'd never heard of, and I'd give it a go. That's how you learn and grow, isn't it? You, you give something new a try. So I got this one this time, Bunk Dogger. I mean, apparently she's actually holding the album there, but you know, you're thinking yeah, that girl's face is like pretty classic. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's uh, first offence and it is offensive. It's just shit. It. Five quid, it's all right. It's actually going for something like 15 top shelf on uh, on Discogs, which is quite, it's just, it's a, a world away from Little Bow Bitch. It's the same kind of music there. I mean, that was another random five pound wildcard purchase I got a while back from Record Hut. Um, and that was really good. It's it's kind of got some energy to it, some some vitality to it. But this is kind of like meant to be kind of new wave rock from like the eighties, and it it just I don't know. It just didn't quite quite grab me. Didn't quite grab me. That was nineteen seventy eight. Sorry, not the eighties. Nineteen seventy eight. Again, an original pressing. Four ninety nine. It's on the RCA label. So you know. It's, Sounds really nice. It's a really nice pressing, like orally from an audio point of view. It, it comes across really well. It's just the songs just aren't great, sadly. But hey ho, we're into the final furlong. This is my HMV bargain. Now I generally I don't buy a lot of records from HMV purely because they charge you through the the nose there. You know, they used to do that great two for 30 deal, which was decent, and now they've upped it to two for 40, and the selection's pretty much the same, but you just, you know, so most of the albums that I want to buy from there that are in that, that kind of offer, I've already bought anyway. Um, but I was having a look, and I found this for 15 quid. 15 quid. So I don't have it. Uh, I've got it digitally somewhere. I've got like a massive, I've got about 120 gigabytes of, of uh, digital music on a hard drive and, and that's in there obviously but this I thought for 15 quid yeah I'll have it and it's you know again it's remastered by Jimmy Page I've got um, three and four and physical graffiti all sound really really nice so I thought yeah I'll get it 15 quid it would be rude not to really and it sounds immense it just sounds such a massive album it really is such a massive album um, so yeah, get set up the HMV and just grab yourself a copy. It, uh, you won't regret it. You won't regret it at all. And finally, say the, well not necessarily the best to last, depending on the point of view, but this was another eBay purchase. Now this, for me, is fried gold. Uh, so this gentleman here, Eddie Howell, he did a little bit of a, a musical career sort of back in the, the, the early 70s and at the time Freddie Mercury had heard him perform this track in a club somewhere in, in London and it really you know it, it, for some reason he, he got quite obsessed with it and so he, he kept pestering Eddie Howell to, to let him produce it and Eddie was a bit reluctant at first but then he, he said well you know I'll come to the studio and he, he went to the studio I think it was Sam uh, where they recorded some of the, was it She Heart Attack? Was it Night at the Opera? Anyway, it went down, they did some, he, Freddie Mercury kind of laid out some stuff from me, played it all through on piano, uh, and he was quite blown away by it, and then Brian May kind of got involved, and he was a little bit, again, he, he felt that it was becoming a little bit of a queen vehicle, but he, he, he pushed back a little bit, but it, it, it is, this is an absolutely immense track. I urge you to go and dig it out on, on YouTube or I think it's on Amazon. I think it is, is just fantastic. It's probably one of the best tracks that Queen never released, if you know what I mean. The, the harmonies, the guitar solo in this is absolutely killer. There was an issue. Um, it was poised to, to do great things. Warner Brothers were really going to push the whole Queen connection and you know it was expected to be a big seller and then there was some kind of, of hiccup uh, and I'm not too sure about what that hiccup was and it got shelved and then didn't see the light of day for quite some time. Um, this is a Dutch pressing uh, I got this off eBay and you know again I took the time to 
inbox the seller and say, look, you know, does it play well? Yes, it does. I got it, and you know, they weren't lying. It's uh, it is cracking, and it again, it's it, the singles from that era all seem so loud and they have such great big full sound. And so to, to listen to this, because I've only ever heard it digitally, a bit like the, the Roger Taylor single of that showcased a little while back, uh, the I Want to Testify, I've only heard them digitally. So, and there's obviously some compression on there and it depends on where you've got, you source it from and, and the sampling rates, etc. And so to hear this, you know, in its full analog glory was, was really, really nice. And I've been playing it today, actually. I dug it out to, to do this and I thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna listen to that. Uh, and I've just been listening to Godzilla as well, and ABC, and Rock and Robin. Rock and Robin was the last one I played before I sat down to do this. But anyway, that is it for today. Uh, I'll be doing some more soon. I've got a little pile of records left. Um, a bit skin at the moment because I've got some gigs coming up. I'm going to see Roger Taylor uh, twice, one for Justin and one for Justin and my dad. And then I'm going to go and see Youngblood. Hey, fellow kids. So yeah, I'm, uh, me and my daughter are going to go, my youngest daughter are going to go and see uh, Youngblood in Manchester, so uh, a couple of weeks time. So quite an exciting time to actually get back to normality and, and it's been, I think the last live show I went to was in 2019 and it was KISS up at the Utility Utilita Arena up there at Newcastle and then I think the day before that I saw Neil Young at Hyde Park. He, he was phenomenal but um so yeah I'm, I'm excited and i've got c16 in november so i'm looking forward to that too and then uh the inimitable jeff beck early next year so things are starting to look up let's just hope we all manage to avoid another lockdown I swear to god if, if we go in a lockdown in the next two weeks before i get to see these concerts i'll do time anyway thanks for listening to me uh waffle on i hope you've uh hope you've enjoyed it i will be getting a little bit more content coming out uh, in the next week. I've got a few more bits and bobs to do. And in the meantime, stay safe and keep listening to those records. Take care.